Uh, well, thank you. First, I, I need to congratulate uh, Davey and, uh, David and Rosie for putting together just a wonderful uh, TED conference, and, uh, and also congratulations to all the other uh, speakers. I need to also take the moment, I know that people haven't done this, but I have to, to thank the, the Raymond and Beverly Sackler Foundation and, and Raymond Sackler, who have endowed our work here at, uh, at the University of Connecticut. Well, what I'd like to talk about is, um, is the area of, um, of regenerative engineering. And, um, and describe it to you, uh, what it is, where it's moving. And in the time I have, give an example of what we're doing in terms of what the future can be in terms of this area. So the musculoskeletal injuries are sort of my, my area. I'm an orthopedic surgeon, I'm also an engineer. I mainly do shoulder and knee, but, uh, and, but and I've done a sports medicine fellowship, so I'm in, interested in sports injuries in particular, but these areas. But it's a big problem, there are over 28 million injuries, musculoskeletal injuries in the, United, in, the, in the United States annually, and one every seven people have an injury each year. And if you looked at this crowd, I'm, I'm sure a good percentage of people have some sort of musculoskeletal injury they've had in their lifetime. And the costs are huge, it's about $250 billion. And so I've worked in an area that, uh, in terms of looking at the regenerating tissues, and about 25 to 30 years ago, this area called tissue engineering started which is an area to, to work to try to regenerate tissues. And there's a lot, a lot of definitions for it. I define it as really a convergence, if you will, of areas such as uh, uh, biological areas, chemical areas, engineering areas for the regeneration, restoration of different tissues. And, and it's really now at about its 25th year anniversary. It's really incredible how, how time has passed. And you know, taking a look back at the, this area of tissue engineering, I had an opportunity to really think about what the future is going to be. And the future, I think, is going to be something that I call regenerative engineering. And uh, so uh, science translational medicine, I was very flattered. They asked me to write a piece about my vision for the future. And so last year, the 25th anniversary, I wrote on regenerative engineering. And I declared it to be a new field. Now, I'm not sure how you actually create a new field. And I, so I, this is my first one. Um, <laughs> So I, I think it's really, if you talk to enough people about it and get them hyped about it, then you can have a new feel. So I'd like for everyone in this audience to say the phrase, regenerative engineering. Regenerative engineering. Now that's good because you're, it's, you're very staid, it's still the morning. I'd like to say here really loudly, regenerative engineering. Say it. Regenerative engineering. Great, thanks. Now, <laughs> your goal today is to tell 10 other people about this. <laughs> and they'll t t talk to 10 other people, and that's how we spread a field. I think that's the way you'd start a new field. <laughs> so regenerative engineering is the integration of tissue engineering with what's gone on in the last 25 years, which is really exciting about the area. And these are advances in materials, and advanced material science, such as nanotechnology, uh, work in stem cell science. We now can create stem cells really in the laboratory. Almost every laboratory in America can do it and also work in terms of developmental biology. How does a newt grow, how do, uh, an arm? Uh, how, do, how, does, uh, how do we regenerate different types of limbs and different types of tissues? Integrating these together for the regeneration of different types of uh, tissues. And this is what regenerative engineering uh, is. Now, in the time I have, I'm gonna give the example of how we apply regenerative engineering principles for the regeneration of tissue. And the example I'm going to give is the anterior cruciate ligament. Again, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, I'm a sports medicine doctor and a shoulder doctor. And so um, I've, I've always marveled at the, this, the anterior, this anterior cruciate ligament. Now, it's really the major intraarticular stabilizer of the knee. It, it controls motion. Uh, and ACL injuries can be devastating. They can really uh, uh, you know, cause lots of problems. Now, if you think about ACL injuries, probably the most famous this year is RG3. How many people have heard of RG3? We clearly have a very knowledgeable audience here today, thank you. And also, of course, Tiger Woods and others uh, have, have torn their ACLs. And when, they're, they're, when they're, they're torn, they're out for the season, they have to have it uh, reconstructed using their own tissue, either autographs, which means you have to harvest your own tissue, which of course has its own level of morbidity and problems in doing that. Or they have to use uh, cadaver tissue uh, from a cadaver and again, you know, using cadaver tissue has its drawbacks. And so um, our work has been to try to re regenerate using these regenerative engineering principles, try to, re to work to re regenerate the anterocruciate ligament. So it all started uh, with our um, looking at the ACL. Now the engineering side of me, as a chemical engineer and biomedical engineer, when I try to regenerate or, or, or look at some, of the, some type of tissue, I try to look at it, model it, and understand it. And if we look at the ACL, the ACL is just not a ligament, it actually has different components. It's got fibers, it's got fibrils, 
and we can actually understand how it works by understanding the different types of uh, uh, materials, the components of the materials that are, that are involved. So when I looked at the ACL, I said, it looked, really, it has fibers and fibrils, and that's certain. And so I decided to go down the, down the hall at, my, at uh, Drexel University, where I was working at the time, because I remember seeing uh, Frank Coe, Professor Frank Coe, who was a colleague of mine who worked in materials and worked in textiles. I never knew that much about textiles and, and frankly didn't know what the science of what the textiles. And so I walked by his, uh, his office, knocked on his door, and I said to him, are you, what are you doing in here? Are you, are you making leisure suits? <laughs> and um, he chuckled and he invited me in. He didn't throw me out. He invited me in and he showed me a fiber and he said, what do you think about this? And I, it was a very flimsy fiber and I, I broke it and I said, I don't think much of it. Um, and he said, well, what do you think about this? And he showed me something that felt like a metal bar. And I said, well, it's a metal bar, very strong. And he said, no, I made this metal bar out of this fiber. It's actually a fiber bar. And it, it dawned on me that somewhere between that fiber and what made that bar that felt like metal, I could create an ACL. And so we worked, and this is Frank Coe and also my, my graduate student, James Cooper, who's now a great professor at uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Um, we worked on the development of this, uh, of this engineered ACL. Again, looking at the hierarchical design that takes place in terms of these different areas. So created a three-dimensional textile st uh, structure using a three-dimensional braid. And by creating this three-dimensional braided structure, we're able, using fiber technology, really able to control the, the mechanical properties of the, of the of material really very, very precisely. And, these, uh, and, and so these 3D braids allowed us to be able to you know, really create a very, very precise material. Because, of course, you have to create something that not only is mechanically strong enough, but at the same time, it has to be able to have cells attach and grow and, and, uh, and move forward. At the same time, we started to understand in terms of this regenerative engineering concept, how materials and cells start to interact. And one of the, more, one of the important things that we found is that there's a, there's a dynamic that takes place between cells and materials that are based upon the size of the materials that are involved. And we can think about this even in our own world. Um, so in terms of a length scale that's, let's say, one-tenth of our length scale, small fibers, cells attach and grow and they actually sort of grow on a, in a tightrope type of way when they attach and grow, when the fibers are very, very small. Say if you have fibers that are just a few inches that are in diameter, if, you, if they were placed, if you had, a, you know, you had to, to be on top of them, you just sort of balance yourself. Um, cells, if they're in a large, large area, maybe like 10 or 20 times their size, um, they actually move in different directions, and they grow and they proliferate in different directions. Kind of like if we were all in, the, in a room like this size, we would just move in different directions. But when cells are placed on a, on a dimension that's about their size, say uh, 20 or 30 microns in that range, between 10 and 30 microns, they actually move in a certain direction. And we do the same thing. When you think about a highway, a highway is about 12 feet wide or 18 feet wide, sort of two to three times your size. And when you're on the highway, you don't go sideways, you go down the highway. And so by engineering our fibers in the size range of the cell, we can engineer a material which cells attach on and they start to move across the area. And that's just what we see. And this is a, these are rabbit ACL cells. We, put them on the, we, we actually put them on our fibers. And when they're placed on the fibers, they start to grow in the direction of the fibers. So now we have a way to create a ligament and we have a way to have cells attach on the ligament and start to regenerate that ligament across the area of the fibers. And so that's what we've done. So we've uh, moved from there and we created these, uh, these, uh, these ACL grafts. Now remember, a ligament is a complex structure. It actually connects bone to bone. So it has a bone part, it's got the, in, the ligament part, and then you have the bone part. So you have to actually create two different types of matrices, one that's gonna be in the bone and one that's gonna be across that area. So we created that and uh, using our fiber technology, optimized it for mechanical properties, optimized it for cells growing, and now we know how cells can grow across that area if they're optimized in terms of the different areas. We create a, ra a rabbit model for regenerating it where we actually place the ligament across that area, and we do the, this is uh, the surgery that we do to place it. And, the, um, and this is what it looks like after uh, three months. We, we open it up, you get a glistening uh, rabbit, um, rabbit uh, uh, ligament in that area. And during the three month period, the, uh, the rabbit is actually doing okay. They are actually running around and they're you know, very happy uh, during the period of uh, after when, when, the, when it goes in. 
Now I'm going to show you a picture, and it, it's actually a histology type picture, but it's sort of, it is sort of cool. And this is what it looks like after three months, after 12 weeks. And the little round things are the fibers. Remember we talked about the fibers, they're going to be polymeric fibers. And we have the cells that are actually wrapped around those fibers and they're growing up and down those, those fibers. And the green stuff is actually the matrix. It's making matrix, it's making the ACL. And so this is the first time we were able to demonstrate that we could actually regenerate the ACL, and we were extremely, extremely excited. Um, one of the people, in my, one of my students in my lab said, you know, you know, Dr. Lorenzen, we've really discovered that if we find a rabbit that has a football injury, we've got the answer for it. <laughs> I told them we were doing more than that. We're we'll moving from there. But we were excited about it, and then also what we found was that others were excited about it. We were very happy that, uh, and this is actually that, uh, that uh, National Geographic actually had uh, picked it up. I got a phone call from my, my old chemistry teacher, uh, Bill Brooks, and he called me up and, and said, listen, you know, actually he texted me, and he texted me that, that he was at his local Walgreens and picked it up and uh, we should go to page whatever to look for it. And in fact, under the 100 discoveries uh, that uh, changed our world under, uh, this was last year, under number 30, um, they highlighted the work that we did, and that was the work that we did at the, at the University of Virginia, where we did our rabbit work for ACL regeneration, really, which, uh, which, uh, which really talks, speaks to the, the potential of the technology to be able to, to really be a solution that we can utilize uh, in, uh, in, in larger animals. So we've moved from there, and at that point, we've now scaled up, and we've scaled up from our, from our, rabbit, from our rabbit studies to the next level, and that's been in, uh, in sheep. And this is what it looks like at six months in sheep. And what we, we can get a glistening ACL. Again, this is from a synthetic uh, uh, material, from a polymeric material that we placed across that area, engineered just with the material itself, engineered in a way to allow for cells to attach, grow across the area, and, and to regenerate the area. And this is where we are at, um, at six months where we, in sheep, where we can get a, a, nice, a nice glistening ACL. And then at 18 months, this is a picture, and this is not a picture of normal tissue, which it looks like normal tissue, but it is actually the ACL after 18 months. So after 18 months, we can get a fully regenerated ACL with tissue that is really you know, almost indistinguishable for, from native tissue. So we're very, very excited about that. And, and so now we've moved from there to, uh, to our work in, in, uh, in sheep uh, to now to the next level. Um, and that's the, the, the um, utilizing our regenerative engineering principles and continuing to scale this up. Um, a company called Soft Tissue Regeneration, I scientifically uh, founded, uh, has, now, has now continued the work and is now continuing to, to move it to the next level. And at this point, the, uh, the engineered ligament is now, at this point, has a first implantation in man, and that was in July of this year. So we are very, very excited about the technology. Um, uh, we will, uh, it's uh, now been implanted in man in, in, uh, in Europe. Uh, and uh, the hope is that now we have the answer for regeneration of these uh, different tissues. So this is an example of this area that we call regenerative engineering. It really combines elements of, of, uh, of tissue engineering, uh, 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 stem cell science, advanced material science, and we showed how we looked at uh, advanced materials in terms of being able to, to regenerate our ACL in this case, and also our work in terms of, uh, and also our work in, in terms of uh, developmental biology. We believe this is a combination for the future and, and uh, look forward to uh, the uh, results that we'll get, not only with this tissue, these tissues, and we're working in obviously in bone, soft tissue, other areas, but even more complex tissues and, and, and ultimately to be able to create systems that can regenerate uh, large areas, even limbs, uh, which is our next level of our goals. Thank you.